I'm just gonna say it. If I had to pick between something new and undercooked or something refined, I'd pick the latter. Yes, Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked happened on July 26th for the first time in Seoul. I was there, and the jet lag face you see is because I already made the trip back and uh, with devices. I didn't really want to bore you with another typical hands-on video describing what you already knew. Instead, I decided to actually use these devices for a couple of days and tell you what my honest first impressions are as I wrap my ideas around for our full reviews. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's dive in. This was a pretty loaded event, not just with foldables, tablets, and smartwatches, but also with a lot of awesome Korean culture. We spent time at Samsung's R&D Center meeting the design team, the guy responsible for spending eight years going from idea to the first Galaxy Fold, and also looking into all the prototypes that were considered before the final product we saw on Wednesday. I think it helped a lot in gaining context for why Samsung is pursuing this ideal that your phone should fold, how the design language has gotten more cohesive and also what's next. While I get to that, let me briefly go through everything else, starting with the reason why you should care about this Galaxy Tab S9 series. I've got the big boy Ultra here. In the past, this lineup was, yes, premium, but not necessarily as pampered as the smartphone division. This changes now. Older processors and less quality as you go for the smaller tablets is now gone. The idea now is that you get nearly the same tablet and all you have to do is pick a size. They all share the new design language that mimics more of the Galaxy S. They all share the same dynamic AMOLED 2X display with more than enough resolution for each size, meaning literally the best screen in the market for a tablet. You also get the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy powering the show on all three devices, with plenty of RAM storage and connectivity for you to feel you're getting the latest specs available. All you have to do is again, pick the base, the plus or the ultra and the experience is the same, but either smaller or larger. Fine, there's one less camera on the smaller one, but don't be that person that takes photos with a tablet. So far, I've spent my time mostly with this Ultra and I can notice performance gains, along with subtle enhancements in One UI that make it feel more refined. That being said, I do wish the aspect ratio was more squared. I'm not really a fan of protruding camera modules on this product as well. I actually prefer it to lay flat. And of course, I wish they were less expensive. Samsung actually claims that the reason why they've gone premium is because they've found more success in this segment, so good for them. At this point, I'm just glad they keep persisting at a time when almost everyone has abandoned Android tablets. Now, as for the watches, let's just say that if you like Samsung's approach, you should definitely care. First of all, the Watch Classic is on my wrist. It is back with its full rotating bezel glory, but the approach is slightly different. You almost can't tell the bezel is a separate piece, which is great. I love this minimalistic design aesthetic. Yes, I know the Watch 6 is not really different from the 5 visually or even the 4, but the reason this lineup matters is because Samsung finally updated the chip after, what, more than four years? Theoretically, the spec sheet points to a watch lineup that can finally give us the snappy experience and battery life we've wanted, as this chip is far more efficient in architecture. And then there are the little things, like Samsung finally figuring out a quick release design for its watch straps, and the added benefits in the software features. Overall, I'd say my first couple of days with the Classic have been kind of mixed. The battery is good, but not necessarily much better than it was before, and uh, well, I already did my first run with it, and as with the previous variants, it is still lagging a quarter of a mile behind, which is totally a deal breaker for me. I'll keep you posted the more I use it. I think the biggest star of the show was the Galaxy Z Flip 5, making it clear that this is the phone Samsung has succeeded with most. To state the obvious, yes, the outer screen is now much larger at 3.4 inches diagonal, but the approach is different to the Razer. You can't really load full applications on it without a few tricks, but after using the Razer Plus for a couple of weeks, I will say that I'm okay with that. See, my experience with Moto has been so crammed that I rarely use it. Samsung is more about larger widgets, being able to quickly respond to something, and selfies. 
Boy, did they make this phone about selfies. I actually think what's most important is actually internal improvements. The hinge has gotten dramatically better, and you can feel it. This phone feels more solid, there is no crackling noise at all, and yes, it now folds fully shut, even if, uh, well, the crease is sort of still here. The inner screen does remain unchanged from before, but it's not like there's a better screen in the market right now, and this updated bell shape in the hinge means it'll be more durable. And then speaking of that, the outer glass is now stronger Gorilla Glass Victus 2, and once you look into internals, you're not just getting the latest Snapdragon an HN2 for Galaxy, but the base model now launches with double the storage at faster speeds for the same money as last year, in addition to newer forms of connectivity. Two days in and I will tell you battery life is finally flagship territory, lasting a full day without a problem. About the only thing that I'd change is that this is the phone where I'd love a higher resolution primary camera so that you can then use that to serve as lossless 2 or 3X as a telephoto. Surely the new chip means an improved ISP for better image processing, but if we're honest, a good triple camera array is really all that separates this from any other conventional flagship right now. Now, the Z Fold 5 is probably the product that got the least amount of visual improvements, but call me a weirdo, I'm pretty happy with the refinements. I use the Fold 4 nearly all year since launch, and I do wish it was, what, lighter, that the hinge would make less noise, that when closed it would let in less pocket lint, and that the S Pen had a more compact design, and, uh, well, I pretty much just described the Galaxy Z Fold 5 in a nutshell. The hinge reduction alone means 10 grams less in weight, along with a design that closes fully shut and a stronger feel overall with zero noises. In the past, it all almost felt like if you had to open it against its will, where now it feels more natural. The outer glass is also the stronger Gorilla Glass Victus 2, and the bell shape of the hinge extends the durability of the inner screen, even if, again, the crease is sort of still there. Internally, we also get the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, faster storage, plenty of RAM, and newer forms of connectivity as well. I know a lot of you would have loved the S Pen tucked in, but for now, I'm a happy camper with this slimmer and longer S Pen on a case that deals with the camera wobble because it does protrude a lot. It's almost as if I wouldn't recommend you get one product without the other, meaning the phone and the case, like seriously. And as for the rest, well, yeah, this is what the Fold 4 or 3 should have always been. Now, I know, it is a hard card to play when competitors are doing wider outer screens and thinner designs. I'll elaborate more soon in our comparisons as to why I feel that this is the best design, at least for now, and it has a lot to do with Android, believe it or not. To conclude, let's go back to the way that I started this video. After spending years of knowing firsthand what the curse of the early adopter is like, cause it's my job, let's just say that I've learned to value a refined product over something new for the sake of just looking different. For example, I still feel the Galaxy S3 Ultra is miles better than the S22 Ultra, even if they pretty much look exactly the same. Over time, smartphones have become so simple that it's hard to tell them apart as design matures, and foldables are not exempt from that. Dieter Rams once said, good design should be as little design as possible. It should almost feel undesigned, and as more companies take a stab at foldables, I feel that this will become the trend. I just wish that meant more affordable iterations, and that's not what we saw today, sadly. That said, the time that I spent at the design studio was invaluable. Holding some of these prototypes helped me understand that it's not that Samsung didn't try wider displays or even an S Pen tucked in. It's that in the current state of technology, what's available defines the compromise. The facelift years helped compensate for the cost of every major change in a market that's still not as successful successful as many companies envisioned. And yeah, I'm talking foldables. I do honestly like where the company's heading. My first impressions are positive, but recommending that you get one really depends on where you stand. 
I'd say at first glance that if you have last year's flip fold or have a good device to trade in, then I'd definitely take advantage of the pre-order deals because you can pretty much get the flip for free or a massive like what 60% discount on the fold. They are better products overall and the deals are still second to none. I just really don't think that I'd do so if I've missed out on that opportunity because yeah, they're not that much better than before. So I'll leave the links in the description. Same case if you consider tablets or the watches. Stay tuned for our full reviews and comparison to give you a final verdict of the experience of using them. Let us know if you agree with my assessment in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me make quick trips to Korea and back just to get a couple of products that I am not regretting doing so. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.